So many questions and such little time left to answer them. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. We have one episode left of WandaVision, and seemingly still a lot of questions remaining to be answered, and a lot of loose ends to be tied up. What will happen to Wanda's children? What will happen to the Visions? Will Agatha end up remaining a villain, or will she lend a hand? What does S.W.O.R.D. want exactly? Today we'll aim to speculate on some of the answers to these questions and more as we count down the top 10 WandaVision finale theories. Let's get to it. And before we jump into this, obviously, just a warning, there will be lots of spoilers as we're discussing sort of everything in WandaVision up until the point of the finale. So, yes. Keep that in mind. All right, now let's get to it. Number 10, Fox's X-Men connection confirmed? Well, many have moved away from this theory since it's been revealed that Evan Peters' character wasn't what he seemed and was actually a trick of Agatha's. The fact remains that despite the fact it was Agatha all along, that Evan Peters' Quicksilver could still be the real deal. Agatha explains that she didn't revive the original MCU Pietro because his body was full of holes. And we know that Marvel Studios has explained that Decision to cast Evan Peters in the role was actually an early made decision agreed on by the creative team, meant to show how Wanda was being messed with. But it's also a very specific casting choice considering that Evan Peters was Fox's Quicksilver and knowing that us MCU and comic book nerds would fixate on that. Agatha goes on to say that she needed to use other means to provide Wanda with a version of Quicksilver. So instead she used crystalline possession to give us fake Pietro. Pietro, if we will. But while this implies that this Pietro isn't real, the word possession seems to leave us with a small amount of hope. It implies that Agatha had to take hold of an original body to manipulate, one that either had speed powers already or that she somehow gave speed powers to. So what does that mean? That Pietro is a bunch of crystals made and controlled by Agatha to resemble Quicksilver in sort of a way? Or that he's an innocent resident of Westview Agatha recast? Or that Agatha pulled him from the multiverse to use him as her pawn? Which is it? Kinda hoping the latter. Number nine, that's all, folks. WandaVision has been a very stylistic show thus far, allowing us to travel through time and explore the different sitcoms of the decades. Which makes sense now that we know Wanda herself has always been a huge fan of American sitcoms ever since she was a child. Her love for sitcoms, as we saw in episode 8 previously on, would stay with her throughout her entire life, and obviously inspired the look and feel of the stories told to us in Westview. Even the episode previously on is an allusion to sitcoms with its title and focus on retelling Wanda's story thus far. Recaps themselves have played a big role in the evolution of television and how we consume it. But with us moving through to modern day and focusing on that element of television, what is really left for us to say in regards to television and sitcoms? A theory about the last episode is that it might end up being in part a rap episode, with characters going back and discussing things that have happened. After all, rap shows have kind of become the evolution of the recap, allowing the show creators, actors, and sometimes even critics or fans to go back after the show is finished and discuss what happened and what it all means in terms of the larger picture. Or will we see the very stylized elements of Wanda completely be discarded for the finale? What do we have left to cover when it comes to the evolution of television and the world of sitcoms? And friends, before we move on to our next spot, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you are loving WandaVision as much as we are. Number eight, forget the past, this is your future. There is no doubt at this point that WandaVision has taken some mad inspiration from the comic book story House of M. In the episode previously on, as Wanda was guided through her past, we learned that she did in fact suffer a sort of mental breakdown upon returning to a bit of land that she and Vision had planned to live out their days on, but without Vision so sad. And we learned that this break was what transformed Westview into a classic sitcom inspired town. Although Wanda still does claim that there is much in the town that she isn't actually in control of, her magic definitely seems to be what set everything off. Well, her magic and her emotional state after realizing she was totally and completely alone in the world, which is pretty tragic. But although Wanda seems to now remember what happened before she and Vision came to Westview, the question is, will she continue to remember everything that has happened this season? In the overall House of M storyline, Agatha does later end up wiping Scarlet Witch's mind of her children's existence in order to protect her and the rest of the world. Is it possible that we could, in this last episode, see something similar happen and see Wanda made to forget everything for her own 
good. Number seven, is that you, Dormammu? When Agnes was revealed to be the witch we knew all along, Agatha Harkness, as well as the main villain of the show, in the catchy closing number, it was Agatha all along. You may have noticed something else tying her to yet another powerful and important MCU villain. Dormammu. While we don't have a ton of evidence to support this connection, we do have one big thing, especially when it comes to cinematic evidence or connection cues in film. Color. Agatha's magic color is purple, and so is Dormammu's. We know that Agatha dabbled in dark magic to get her power from the flashback we saw where her coven, including her own mother, condemned her. Unfortunately for them, her power was too strong, and she drained all of them of their life energy, walking over their lifeless husks to take her mother's brooch before leaving. Is it possible that the dark powers that Agatha took for herself actually come from or are connected to Dormammu in some way? It would help to explain the connection one WandaVision is meant to have to the film Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Because, you know, Do Doctor Strange, Dormammu, and then maybe Agatha? I don't know. Number six, Mephisto. Instead of Dormammu, of course, the other big, big bad that Agatha got her powers from could also be the much anticipated Mephisto. Many fans have speculated from the beginning that with Wanda's twins would come the inevitable inclusion of Mephisto in WandaVision, as in the comics, it is using parts of Mephisto's soul that Wanda is able to create her twins. Well, that and residual magical energy absorbed during a fight with Salem Seven. While we haven't had any huge and recent hints at his arrival, there are hints that he could be coming here and there. The dark magic that Agatha acquired could instead of coming from Dormammu have indeed come from Mephisto or perhaps some pact with him. And I always come back to that line from episode two, don't touch that dial, when Dottie chastises one member of her committee for not inquiring about the chairs. The devil's in the details, Bev, Dottie chides, leading to a witty aside from Agnes, AKA Agatha, to Wanda. That's not the only place he is. While Agnes is obviously meant to be referring to Dottie, the look on her face is just so sly, it almost implies a more darker meaning to the phrase, one Agatha might be waiting to see if Wanda picks up on. She's like, hmm, do you know Mephisto? Do you know? No? Okay. Wanda doesn't know anything. Wanda's pretty <laughs> unaware of all of this. Number five, Kang the Conqueror. In the comics, Kang is one of the people responsible for giving us white vision. Well. Not Kang specifically, but another version of himself from the future known as Immortus. Yeah, Kang is confusing. Kang the Conqueror is an interesting villain for us to be incorporating into this next phase of the MCU, as he is a time traveler, and as such pops up all over the place and is revealed to be, well, multiple people. When it comes to Immortus, future Kang the Conqueror's involvement in the creation of White Vision, he was the one who actually tore Vision apart initially, giving us this new version upon him being reconstructed. Because in WandaVision, we discovered that S.W.O.R.D. director Tyler Hayward was the one responsible for taking Vision's body apart. This could imply that Hayward is not who he appears to be at all, but is actually Kang the Conqueror in another form. Kang the Conqueror is said to appear in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania and be played by the brilliant Jonathan Majors. But is it possible that he could be Hayward in disguise? Or could he instead be revealed to be an influential force yet unseen in WandaVision, whom it will be revealed Hayward is secretly loyal to and is working at the behest of? I believe that. I'm just saying. Number four, Return of Ultron. While White Vision in the comics is not Ultron in the slightest, in the MCU it is possible that we could see him return via this blank slate reincarnation of Vision that is referred to as White Vision both in the comics and on the screen. Vision himself in the MCU was intended by Ultron to be his final perfect form after Ultron uploaded himself into that synthesoid body. However, the Avengers managed to steal Vision's body before the upload can be complete and interrupted it, instead turning Vision into a combination of beings and consciousness. Some parts Ultron, some parts Jarvis AI, and a sprinkle of Bruce Banner and Tony Stark themselves made up what Vision would become, taking that name in fact for himself. And so instead of becoming Ultron's final form and a villain, Vision instead became a hero. But what if S.W.O.R.D. wanted to bring Vision back online so that they could use him as the weapon that he was originally intended to be? Something that could help protect the Earth, so that heroes wouldn't have to, which was kind of how Ultron came to be. What if S.W.O.R.D. wanted to bring Ultron back? And what if that is what we see with this revival? Number three, fake vision versus white vision. Going into the finale, we now have two versions of vision. Assuming that the one that Wanda created from scratch, I suppose we could call him 
fake vision or maybe good vision possibly is still around and on his way. It's likely that this means we'll see a battle between white vision and fake vision. Why? Well, when Vision was reconstructed as White Vision in the comics by Hank Pym, he returned without emotions or really any connections to Wanda. He basically was like, had no memories, he was like a completely blank slate. He didn't have the same mind because he was without Wonder Man's brain patterns and therefore didn't feel love for his wife, Scarlet Witch. Likely this means White Vision will be more inclined to behave logically as opposed to emotionally, leading to him possibly being used to stop Wanda. Whereas Fake Vision loves Wanda and will likely attempt to do anything to protect her. Hence, the fight. Number two, there can only be one. How will the fight end though? I think it could go one of two ways. Either Wanda is forced to move on and both versions of Vision will end up being destroyed, or we will see the return of Vision as Wanda, possibly with the help of Agatha, finds a way to use her powers to fuse the two versions of Vision back together. Of course, to get Agatha's help in order to help Wanda control her magic to do this, there might be a price, but I'm sure for Wanda, almost any price is worth it to get Vision back. Fusing these two together would give us both the mind and body of vision, which could be enough, but we still also might need a third ingredient. We might need a soul to ground him. But who knows? He is a synthesoid, so maybe mind and body will just be good enough. However, if we need a soul, where do you think we might get it? Mephisto? Hello? You there? Number one, Doctor Strange. While many suspect that Paul Bettany was actually trolling us with his hints at a big upcoming cameo, with him actually referring to scenes he performed with himself fighting as both fake vision and white vision at the same time on screen, it is possible that Wanda still has a few surprises and tricks up its sleeves when it comes to star-studded cameos. Cause yeah, Paul Bettany was like, it's uh, there's gonna be someone in there I've never worked with before. JK Lowell's, is it yourself, Paul Bettany? Have you never done a scene with yourself? We know that WandaVision is meant to lead into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and with how everything seems to have been building so far, it is likely we could even see Benedict Cumberbatch make an appearance himself as the film's title character. Doctor Stephen Strange has a habit, after all in the comics, of showing up to help clean up Wanda's chaos magic created messes, and so he could make an appearance to help with just that. Also, if we get Benedict Cumberbatch, we could also have Dormammu in there if we wanted. What are some of your favorite theories for WandaVision's finale? Do you think there are any more cameos coming our way this season? Do you think we will ever see a season two of WandaVision? Or do you believe that Marvel is telling us the truth when they imply and often state it will remain a limited series? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you to stay nerdy YouTube.